give an update on a couple of uh, issues, many of which you have been following. And uh, we thought it's important to update us on uh, the latest, on the goings on. All right, Honorable Joel Senyanyi, leader of opposition. Usonga Zekwanga Uganda, Zigenda Maso, Yang and Songa Kude Jembe Mauli, Itavamu, and Songa Yobuli Wenguzi, Ovosuse. Binono, Yatani, of which they were Honorable Leader, a little leader of opposition, Honorable Mathias in Pogan Samba. There's even a national anti platform which in Java and Chumlavisa, government, what a bagger among Quaria sent a Yamuam solo, a Tali Combadida. Yagamanti of Nakasimo. Sibina ne chimugamba vya ya njulemba na Uganda ababuli la kasi ma koko kati ya kati ya kamu e wakumi yemoche jijeri ya kuzi jenki zeni yoku au kana koko bani abali ba bade kumi chifuti ya limu cha muesa kasi ma leader of opposition injo re senyani zinzonga zezimu zazoku mene ya mene yoku ogera ko agamati nguzi limu parliament yesusi yesusi kubange tani kila kumu kama wawe speaker ni tamongi nerio kesi asali na bonna ba mukirizam. Because to bang a mustachim and it among Baba Jaculi is a sente of my woman solo, and got a deep combalida. Bakua will be saw when not while you walk and over Labalam Bakua deal maker. Or Okwanti at Anisok Valavisa, Naiba Tanisok Musula Motego, the Langa Oli Rabinaga, and Tibada Musukem Katega can seem be. Yes, that are Saba. Yes, Sabo again over Nakurumu, never more seem be than Nakunia. Opposition. Kujukiza not to come running Haji said to Romsomi with Dua. Mwekwat, Aksomedo could do was it, or you saw Bolamu. Divasomedo could do was it, but it is unto a madal, charcoal at the gator, it did do was a zuonia. Now I'm wet as a Mokubi of Simitism San Vizito Sato. A Sato Mamo, a Sato Menda, a Vinu Mutano, the Haji said to Romsomi with Dua. Then the papers, ministerial policy statements, afterwards we get to those issues. Then she quickly adjourned. For obvious reasons. Because there's a lot she's trying to hide. And we are saying we will not allow for anything to be hidden. We are going to be insistent on these issues. Because it's my job as the leader of the opposition to keep government in check. And as I have said separately, government includes the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. So as I insist on these issues, I don't have anything personal with the speaker. I'm simply doing my job. The other issue was we asked Parliament to comprehensively respond to these concerns that have been raised in the public. That has not happened. So what I have done, I have written to a couple of entities. I've written to the IGG, Financial Intelligence Authority, DPP, and the Auditor General, their mandate to investigate matters of financial impropriety and other issues that are happening here at Parliament. Because those entities are put in place by law and they have different mandates, which mandates we expect them to operate within. And perhaps before I get to the detail of uh, the letters, I'm going to show you the letters that I did write and the content therein. Yeah, just to remind us the issues that we also put in before these entities that we want them to look into. <coughs> issues that we have severally talked about. Um, one is by the end of the speaker, because the speaker, in a period of 164 days, actually 146 days, um, she received 2.6 billion shillings as per diem. When you do the tabulation, it shows that every single day she was being paid over 4,000 US dollars. And yet the per diem of the speaker is 990 US dollars. So we want that matter investigated because it's got to be explained. 
did the speaker sit and decide I have now changed my commission? She does not have those powers. She does not have those powers. Number two, and even more problematic, is the speaker did not travel for all these engagements. In fact, one of them that happened in Midran, South Africa, for which she got, you know, per diem of 318 million shillings for 20 days, we understand there was no Uganda delegation to that meeting. So the speaker did not travel. Just like for many of these others, maybe she went for a day or two or whatever, but she claimed all of this money. And yet, she is claiming a lot more than she's entitled to. So there are two problems there. You are entitled to $990 per day, but you are giving yourself $4,000 US per day. Number two, that we don't believe the speaker traveled for all these days. Because the speaker has never been away for... What, what it would mean is that last year, she was away for half the year. That's not true. The speaker is always here. Even when she will go away, I mean, there's a time she had twins, two weeks later, she was back to presiding over the house. So there's no evidence to show that last year, the speaker was away for half the year, for about six months. And so these are critical issues that we are concerned about. Uh, of course, there's by the end to the clerk, which also needs to be explained because some trips he was meant to be here, and then the dates were clashing with another trip for which he got per year. How does that happen? And he's the accounting officer. By the way, for him, his problems might be more because he's the accounting officer. He's the one who is meant to authorize all the releases, financial releases of parliament. Except if he tells us that he has been torpedoed by the speaker, then he needs to explain that. But he's the accounting officer. So he has got to explain not just his per diems, but all these monies at parliament. That's important. Of course, it's by game of the speaker's husband, whenever she travels, he goes with her. At some point, they were in Kigali and at the same time in Nairobi. How? Does not make sense. The other issues are staffing concerns, as we did raise them. That there are several people who have been hired. And that's even captured in the Auditor General's report. People who have got jobs here, they earn a salary, but they are hardly here. We understand that they are operating in people's private businesses, but they earn a salary from parliament. That's illegal. While the staff that we need to operate here cannot, you know, be availed, contracts cannot be renewed, but you're hiring people from wherever, and um, they're earning money for not doing work. The other issue is, uh, of course, the commission, people who sat and they awarded themselves money, irregularly, that has got to be looked into as well. Then there's the speaker's community outreaches, where billions of shillings were put on the accounts of staff members of parliament. They withdrew that money, took it to the speaker. There's no law providing for that. How did it happen? What did this money do? Billions of shillings. Because when you see the assistant director, 2.4 billion shillings was put on his account. He withdrew and took to the speaker. The principal protocol officer in the speaker's office, 1.1 billion shillings. Mr. Prince of Boring, spokesperson of parliament, 1.9 billion shillings was put on his account, which he withdrew to the speaker. What that explained? Okay. Uh, another officer in the speaker's office, 4.5 billion shillings. Put on his account, he withdraws, takes to the speaker. What are these activities? We want them explained because these are billions of shillings. We want accountability for this money, but also it's illegal for this money in terms of staff. And hopefully, staff at parliament will done because you see, they will cause you to commit an illegality. And you, it's not enough for you to explain and say, it wasn't my money, I simply withdrew it and took it to the speaker. How did you get involved? How is it that billions of shillings are wired to your account, your personal account? So they've got to explain these issues as well. Um, there's also direct payments to the director in the leader of government business office, 4.4 billion shillings that was put on her account. Nothing works. Which ones? All of these have got to be explained. Um, even as we are writing to these entities. The other interesting issue 
a contract. With me, I have a contract huh? between the Parliamentary Commission and Mama Bukedia FM. This is a registration belonging to the Speaker of Parliament. This contract is worth 3.13 billion shillings. Apparently, to do <coughs> Parliament related work. Which work is that? We are asking what procurement regulations were followed for this radio station of the speaker to get this contract worth 3.13 billion shillings. What work is it that this radio station does that you, other media houses, don't do? Because many of you, you cover parliament life and so on. You're not paying this money. So what special work is the speaker's radio station doing for parliament for it to be awarded a contract worth 3.13 billion shillings? What procurement regulations were followed? But also, more disturbing, signed by staff in the office of the speaker as, the, as managers of her registration. Mm. How do you explain these ridiculous things? This is a contract worth 3.13 billion shillings. So aside from how it was given out, but the people signing on behalf of the registration as managers of the speaker's registration and staff in her office here. So all of these illegal acts have got to be thoroughly investigated. We demand answers. Now, I had talked about the letters that I have written to the different entities. The first one is to the Inspectorate of Government. And uh, this letter was received. I am asking and urging the Inspector General of Government to investigate the financial impropriety, all these allegations, financial impropriety, irregular staff recruitment, this contract of the radio station, and so on and so forth, happening here at Parliament. I saw the Inspector General of Government saying that the Auditor General is investigating and so she is stepping aside. And we are saying, wait a minute. IGG, what exactly are you running away from? Why are you running away from your responsibility? Because the mandate of the IGG is clear. The IGG cannot say that there is somebody else who is investigating. In fact, auditing, because the Auditor General audits, of course, as the investigator and so on. But the IGG cannot say, the Auditor General is investigating, so let me step aside. No. Do not run away from your responsibilities, except if you're saying you're too scared as well. So there's no law, because the mandate of the IGG is very clear. The mandate of the Auditor General is very clear. There's no overlap. So the IGG, there's no law that passed the IGG from investigating a matter just because somebody else is investigating, because the IGG is an independent entity, statutory entity put in place by law. So we think that the IGG needs not to run away from her responsibility, which is very clear within the law. And the mandates are different. Besides, the Auditor General is an officer of Parliament. We understand that the Speaker asked the Auditor General to come and carry out an audit regarding these issues. We are not very convinced about that audit because one, the Auditor General is an officer of Parliament. Number two, the Auditor General sent the same team that has been auditing Parliament all this while to carry out this special audit as well. They are conflicted. We don't expect them to come up with anything new. Them to say what we audited the other time was not proper, so we have found some new issues, yeah? Um, and so I've also written to the Auditor General asking him, number one, to send a new team, not the one that has been auditing Parliament, which is what he said. Because we believe that that particular audit team is just going to do window dressing and cleansing. And then the Speaker will flash a report and say, you see, the Auditor General has audited Everything is okay. So we don't believe in that audit by the same team which has been auditing Parliament all this while. We are saying there should be a different team. 
if anything, there should be a forensic audit. Because you see, these are billions of shillings that we're talking about. So we are telling the Auditor General, take this audit very seriously. Dig deeper. You cannot have that same team that has been coming all the while. And that's one of the letters that I've written to the Auditor General. And in essence, that's why we are telling the IGG, you cannot say the Auditor General is auditing. Because the Auditor General is actually part of us. Of course, yes, he has got a legal mandate, but he's part of us. And now that the Speaker has told him, do an audit, what guarantee do we have that that will be a proper audit? That won't just be doing window dressing. So we are telling the IGG, please, do not run away from your responsibility. Your mandate is very clear. Post the other letter to the Auditor General. We are asking for authenticated uh, records of payments under the Parliamentary Commission and so on, because uh, those are important for us as leaders, even as we carry out investigations, even for these different acts and entities that are executing their mandate. I also have written to the DPP. This letter was uh, received yesterday as well. The DPP is an independent <coughs> entity, but the DPP can be requested and urged to cause an investigation. And therefore the DPP gets to direct police to carry out investigations. That's why I have written to the DPP, urging her to cause an investigation, because these are very serious matters that should actually ultimately, we believe, lead to prosecution because there's lots of glaring irregularities. But anyhow, we are asking the Director of Public Prosecution cause an investigation in these matters. And our hope again is that the, uh, the DPP will not say, but there are other people investigating. There's no harm at all. These are all independent institutions that have different mandates. Their mandates don't overlap. Otherwise then, we would have had only one. We would not have IGG, we would not have DPP, we would not have Auditor General and so on. But they are all in place with different mandates. Our expectation is that uh, they will each carry out their mandate to get to the bottom of these issues. I've also written to the Financial Intelligence Authority, which is another legal body that has got a clear mandate. The Financial Intelligence Authority, our hope is that they will follow up on these monies, billions of shillings that have been going onto people's accounts, bank accounts, with the drones surreptitiously and so on. Our hope is that Financial Intelligence Authority, which is empowered by the Anti-Money Laundering Act, will dig deep into these issues because there are clear, glaring issues of money laundering. Billions of shillings onto people's accounts, and then they are withdrawn immediately. What exactly is this money doing? Going on to people's individual accounts. Again, like I've said, our hope is that uh, they will each carry out and that they will not try and hide within legalities. As we have heard the IGG say, the Auditor General is investigating. No, the Auditor General has got his mandate. You have got your mandate. Okay? carry out your mandate, because each of these is an independent institution. There are some other issues of concern. We have seen the Speaker of Parliament coming out to say she has got the support of Mr. Museveni, as if to say that all of you Ugandans who are asking her for answers, you can go to hell. We want to remind the Speaker of Parliament, who we respect because of the office she occupies, and, and that's not in doubt. We're not asking these questions out of disrespect, as some people are saying. How can the Speaker be disrespected? Well, the Speaker occupies a public office. The money we are talking about is public money. So it's our job to ask for accountability for public money. So stop trying to, to trip us by saying we're being disrespectful. There's nothing disrespectful about what we are doing about us asking questions. And we are not going to stop asking questions of accountability. 
So again, we want to ask government, if it is true, as the speaker is trying to paint it, because she seems to say, government is behind me, I'll not be investigated. What happened to the government policy of zero tolerance to corruption? Was it just another phrase that was said uh, to excite the people of Uganda? Will this be treated like the Mabati saga, where some powerful people were ignored, even when they were involved in stealing Mabati? and she's belonging to Karamoja. So our hope also is that government will come out clearly. Because the speaker seems to say she has the backing of government. If you don't have the backing of government to involve yourself in financial impropriety, respond to these issues as yourself. Speaker has also been on the loose blaming everybody she can blame. She has blamed homosexuals, I saw her blaming uh, the Right Honorable Rebecca Kadaga, saying these old women who are fighting us don't know what they left in the Speaker's office and uh, they want to reclaim. And she said, you see, they're developing their areas, Kamuli is developed. Why don't they want us to develop our other areas? It is clear who she was talking about. She was talking about the Right Honorable Rebecca Kadaga. I don't know if there are any personal issues between those two leaders. That's none of my business. My business is that the speaker accounts for taxpayers' money. I don't know who next she's going to blame because now every day she's looking for someone to blame. It is not homosexuals, now it is Kadaga, and tomorrow I don't know who. I don't care who might have issues with her, as she does claim that those who are raising these issues they are fighting her. I don't know, I don't care. What I care about is that she gets to account for these taxpayers' money. That's what is important to me and to the people of Uganda. That's what is important to us. So stop giving us these, these excuses, finding somebody to blame. You respond to the issues we are asking about. It is possible you have people, all of us in politics have people who don't like us, obviously. I'm not naive to think that as leader of the opposition, as MP in Akawa West, and whichever other position I hold, I'm not naive to think that everybody likes me, no. But you see, I can't use the excuse of those who don't like me by not responding to critical accountability issues. No, 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 let's not run away from accountability. Everybody has people who don't like them. But we demand that um, accountability is attended to. And what we are asking of the speaker, part of accountability, for example, for some of these trips, which she probably did take, if you cannot account, refund the money. Yes. Of course, there are other things which there is no other way she can sanitize them, yeah? But um, for these trips, which we believe some of which you did not take, because you cannot be in Kigali for the Ayala Games and in Nairobi at the same time. Doesn't make sense. Refund that money. Well, it's taxpayers' money. That's part of being accountable. And I want to give us an example. Because I've seen some people talk about it um, in my own situation. I went to Nairobi on behalf of Parliament to visit the Honorable Segi Mohammed. Because he's on the side which I leave, the opposition side. And I gave indication that I'll go for one night, I'll be there for one night and return to take care of other responsibilities that I do have. So I did go, came back, gave a report, I interacted with the doctors, gave a report to Parliament about the progress of this member and so on. A couple of days later, I saw a reflection on my account of money. They had processed money for five days as opposed to one day for which I was in Nairobi, which I had indicated I'd be going for. But I'm told they were processing for several others, so it was done collectively. I said, okay. But as is normally the case, as we should be accountable as leaders, when you travel, because sometimes it might be you have gone somewhere and then you realize I need to return for some other engagements. You submit your boarding passes. We have an office here at Parliament called the Accountability Office where those boarding passes are submitted, and so the day is tabulated, 
any extra days for which you were not where you were meant to be, they are deducted off your emoluments for the following month. And so I did submit all of that because I said, no, I was there for one night, so I should not be paid for five days. But that process delayed. And so the money was not deducted off the March emoluments. So I was told it will be deducted off the April emoluments. I said, no, I'm not going to wait for that. So I withdrew money from my account for the four days and I went and deposited that money in the accountability office and I got a receipt for it. Because I said, I don't want this matter to take longer than it should. Yeah. So if you're waiting to deduct it off my pay of April, I'm not going to wait for that. I don't want people to misuse it. So I withdrew money for the four days and I paid it back to Parliament. That's what we ought to do as accountable leaders. Even though, like I'm saying, I did ask for, you know, I was meant to be there for one night, but in process it can happen. Because there were many other people going for different things still in Nairobi. That's okay. Because like again, I've said, sometimes you can go planning to be somewhere for a week and you realize you have to come back for whatever reason. You account. How? That money ought to be deducted. If it takes long to be deducted as well as, well as the bank gets, you take it and pay back that money. That's what we ought to do as accountable leaders. And so that's my urge to the speaker. Some things she cannot explain, and you know, we have got to have proper accountability, prosecution where need be, and so on. But there are those where if you were in Kigali, the money that you got for Nairobi, you take it back. Because you couldn't have been in two places at the same time. And then for Kigali, we shall demand and say, but your per diem is meant to be $990. Why were you paid $4,000 per day? Take back that money also. That's part of being accountable as leaders. I also wanted to talk about the threats. We have been seeing um, whistleblowers and other people, members of the public who are raising these concerns. And we understand their threats to their lives. I want to urge, whether it be the speaker and other leaders against whom concerns are being raised, let's not be cowards. Let's not operate in a cowardly manner. Don't attack the messenger. Respond to the message that they are raising. Respond to the issues that they are raising. And by the way, we have a law that protects even whistleblowers, the Whistleblowers Protection Act. Our hope is that uh, these people will be safe, protected by the law. But again, I want to appeal to the speaker and other leaders against whom issues are being raised. Don't, don't, don't commit two offenses. Deal with this issue. Yeah? If you want to go after people who are raising concerns, that's a cowardly thing to do. Our hope is that they will respond to this issue. And of course, people do ask us. Joel, don't you fear for your life and all these other people that are raising these concerns and so on? I'm doing my job. And so no one will intimidate me. No one. Because this is what I ought to be doing. 